Dolby Atmos. Almost every new device that you see in the stores nowadays seems to support it. But what exactly is Dolby Atmos? And how does it work? Dolby Atmos has transformed regular surround sound into a three-dimensional experience. The warm summer rain seems to be pattering off your living room ceiling. Or the debris of an explosion comes rushing towards you from all directions. It doesn't matter if it's a film, a series or a game, you're always right in the center of the action. If you would like to experience this three-dimensional sound in your own living room, then there are a couple of things that you need to know. Such as what content there is, what kind of speakers you need and if your TV is compatible. In this video I'm gonna answer all these questions and by the end of it you'll know everything you need to know about Dolby Atmos. But first let's talk about the basics of surround sound. Whether it's with movies, music or video games, surround sound always works the same way. In contrast to mono or stereo, the sound not only comes from the front, but from the rear corners of the room as well. The code is easy to crack. Let's start with 2.0 or stereo. In this case there are two channels. This allows sound to flow from two directions. In a film, for example, you can hear whether a sound is coming from the left or the right. The zero at the end stands for the low frequency channel. If you added a subwoofer to your stereo setup you would have a 2.1 system. For a classic surround sound setup the lowest number would be 5.1. 5 speakers plus a subwoofer. On the front side of the room you would have a left speaker, a right speaker and a center speaker in the middle. Then you would have two additional speakers on the back and a subwoofer. We call this surround sound because now the sound starts shifting through the room. For example, if a helicopter flies over the screen, you can now locate it not only from the left to the right, but also behind you. Dolby Atmos extends on classic surround sound with two important points. The sound is no longer channel based, but object based. And also the sound comes from above. Let's start with the above part. With Dolby Atmos there is a third number added after the low frequency number. Now the minimum configuration is 5.1.2. In this case there are three front channels, two rear channels, a low frequency channel and two high channels. These high channels allow you to hear how rain actually seems to be pattering down on you. Or how a helicopter is slowly descending. Maybe right now you're wondering how on earth do I get the sound to come from above. Well there are a few different possibilities. The first and probably the best option are ceiling speakers. These are usually built in the ceiling, but can also be mounted on the ceiling. Another option is so called up firing or Dolby enabled speakers. These direct the sound upward and the sound is then reflected off the ceiling to produce an overhead sound. These up firing speakers can be placed on top of your front speakers or on a nearby surface. Besides that, some manufacturers like for example Focal offer integrated units that include both traditional forward firing speakers and up firing speakers. And last but not least there are also Dolby Atmos soundbars. These are all in one solutions that include amplification and all the speakers you need for Dolby Atmos sound. Even though soundbars are no match for traditional speaker setups, some like for example the Sonos Arc do produce quite convincing results. And depending on your needs, a good soundbar may be all you want. Either way, if you do decide to go with upfiring speakers or a soundbar, then bear in mind that these only work properly with regular flat ceilings, preferably not higher than 3 meters. Another big difference compared to classic surround sound is that Dolby Atmos is mastered differently. Instead of committing to specific channels, Dolby Atmos works with object based mixes. Such an object can be the sound of an airplane, a bullet or even individual raindrops. These objects are no longer assigned to a specific speaker like for example the left front speaker or the rear right speaker, but place more freely in the room with the help of so called metadata. Strictly speaking Dolby Atmos is not actually a sound format on its own. 
but an extension of existing formats such as Dolby True HD and Dolby Digital Plus with the addition of metadata. This metadata tells the AV receiver or soundbar exactly where an object should be placed within the room. The big advantage of this method is that this allows for a very precise three-dimensionality. The highest quality version of Dolby Atmos content is currently only available on Blu-ray and Ultra HD Blu-ray discs or RIPs that include Dolby True HD. Films that include this sound format clearly indicate this on the back. Streaming providers such as Apple TV+, Amazon Prime Video, Disney+, and Netflix also use Dolby Atmos for selected films and series. However, in contrast to Blu-ray and Ultra HD, with streaming providers, Dolby Atmos is delivered in the lossy Dolby Digital Plus format. Streaming providers have to use this compressed version because they have to make do with a lot less bandwidth compared to playing content from a Blu-ray player. Still, Dolby Digital Plus sounds pretty good and with most soundbars or TVs you probably won't hear any difference. Nevertheless, on high quality home theater systems you can easily tell the two formats apart. Now let's have a look at the hardware that you need for a Dolby Atmos setup. The good news is that almost every new Blu-ray or UHD player can output Dolby Atmos. Furthermore, just about every modern soundbar or AV receiver supports Dolby Atmos as well. With TVs however, it's a bit more complicated. If you're planning to connect your source devices like a Blu-ray player or a media player directly to your TV and then pass the sound through to a soundbar or an AV receiver via ARC or EARC, then your TV must be able to handle Dolby Atmos processing. For streaming content, support for Dolby Digital Plus is sufficient and most current television sets can do this. It gets trickier when you want to pass lossless Dolby Atmos from a disc through the TV. In this case, the TV must be compatible with Dolby True HD and have at least one eARC HDMI port. And so does your AV receiver or soundbar. eARC allows you to transmit lossless Dolby Atmos sound via HDMI. With devices that are limited to ARC, only lossy sound such as Dolby Digital Plus is passed through. If you want to know more about lossless sound or the difference between ARC and eARC, I put two links in the description down below of two videos that explain this in great detail. Long story short, to benefit the most from lossless sound, it's a good idea to stick to devices that support eARC. All devices with HDMI 2.1 integrate this option. Some TVs also advertise that they can play Dolby Atmos through their internal speakers. And although some sound pretty good, this is usually a form of psychoacoustic Atmos and not comparable to the sound quality of a good soundbar. Nor does it even come close to what you can experience with a home theater setup. Nevertheless, a full home theater setup with 7 or more speakers plus an AV receiver and a subwoofer is not for everyone. Besides that, this option can quickly become very costly and including all the cables this soon adds up to at least $2000. The cheaper and easier alternative would be a Dolby Atmos soundbar. These offer everything you need without additional purchases. Most models come with a subwoofer and some of the higher range ones even come with upfiring wireless rear speakers. The downside is that this is usually a fixed setup and you cannot upgrade the subwoofer or the individual speakers as you can do with a home theater setup. However, in my opinion, a soundbar is probably the best option for most people. The sound quality seems to be improving with each newer model and installation plus setup is usually a breeze. Both the subwoofer and the rear speakers connect wirelessly and if your TV supports ARC or eARC you will only need to connect one HDMI cable between the soundbar and the TV and you're good to go. I'm convinced that Dolby Atmos is here to stay and unlike its main competitor DTSX will continue to find its way in most living rooms. If you want to experience Dolby Atmos in the best possible way at home, then a setup with an AV receiver and a speaker package is the way to go. The second best option is a good soundbar with an eARC port and upfiring rear speakers. Well, that was my take on Dolby Atmos, but now I'm curious to find out what you guys think. Would you rather have an AV receiver with a speaker package or a good soundbar? 
Or maybe you're just like my wife and you think that the built-in speakers of the TV are all you need. Let me know in the comments down below and see you next time.